Well, hello and welcome to the Girl Power Alliance podcast. I am Pharisee. I'm one of the co-founders here at Girl Power Alliance. And we are back here with you again with another amazing, amazing woman of God. And I want to introduce our guest that we have today. Her name is Susan Fleming, and she is the founder and owner of Heaven to Earth LLC and a business alignment therapist who equips established kingdom CEOs to multiply their her legacy, impact, freedom, energy, life without burnout. And after five years of practicing traditional therapy, she realized that psychology was only a piece of the healing puzzle. Through her own journey, she had incorporated the modalities of psychology, neuroscience, kingdom assignment, mentorship, and coaching. God revealed how all these beautiful pieces fit together, and that became the framework of her signature multiplier method. And I love this bio because, Susan, and welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Amazing. Is she she talks about business and life and it being toxic and how she learned to, you know, work around that and how important that is. And I think this is a super important topic to talk about right now because there are more women in the marketplace that are rising up. And I think as women sometimes as mothers, wives, and sisters and aunts and all of the, you know, accolades that women have you know, running a business, whether it's from home as an entrepreneur, or even just, you know, going into an office, sometimes that balance can be really difficult. Um, So that's kind of what we're going to be diving into today. And I'm super, super excited. And um, Susan, like, would you like to finish the the rest of your bio? Because it, it's pretty amazing. (laughs) Um, well, let's see, what else is there to say? I don't, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not one to focus on the, you know, look at things I've done. (laughs) I know the bio is typically like, you know, um, I, I am a number one international bestselling co-author, you know, I co-authored a book with several other women and that did go to number one. And that's amazing and exciting, you know? Um, but the exciting part of it for me is that God's voice is getting out into the marketplace, you know, cause in that, in that book, I really told my story of how the Lord led me from burnout to now, this is how you work from my rest. This is how you work in my strength. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the book, but I'm even more excited that just, you know, to give God the glory for that. And, um, also, you know, I'm a licensed therapist here in the state of Georgia, and um, so I do some counseling and some coaching, and yeah, there's just, there's so many things. The Lord just continues to expand my reach and what I have my hand in, so I've got um, the book, I have um, a podcast, I've got a YouTube channel, there's so much growth happening right now. (laughs) It's so exciting to be able to, to just share that with everybody. And with that, and I love how, how humble you are with it. And I think that's really, really important is to remember that it is all for the glory of God and not to say, Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. And with that, there are a few things that you said there that I think are super, super important is that when you co-wrote this book with, you know, other women, you really love the fact that you were able to bring God into the marketplace. Now, is that something that you've always wanted? Is that something that you've always done inside of your business now that you've kind of shifted, even though you still do the therapy, is this something that you've always kind of preached and always wanted to bring God into the center of your business? What is happening now is not something I would have ever imagined. (laughs) And I find that, you know, God typically works like that for most people that they'll tell you, I never would have dreamed it. Um, You know, he has just taken me on such an adventure the last few years or so. Um, I, I've known since I was a little girl, like I'm, I'm here to help people. 
And I thought that was going to be through counseling. You know, I went, got my master's degree, did all the things you have to do to get licensed and um, did that for a few years. And, you know, when you get into, or when I got into private practice, it, it was this moment of like, okay, this is it, <laughs> you know, like, uh, my life is beginning now. Like it was this, I had this idea that it was going to just be that that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And it was going to be wonderful. And, um, yeah, within a few years, it was kind of like, is this really it? Like there was still this, um, this longing for more and, I find this with so many women that I talk to that there's the longing for more, but they feel ashamed of it. You know, so often we're told be content with what you have, be grateful for what you have, those sorts of messages. And not that I wasn't grateful, but I just knew there was more. I knew God had something else. And so it was a couple of years of, just kind of searching that out and like, what, what is the more, what is it that, that you want me to, to be doing? And um, so, yeah, when he, he led me into the online space and um, I found, I say I found, I don't even really know how it happened. <laughs> it's one of those things where you look back and go, how did I connect with that person? Like, I don't even remember how we how I found her, how we initially, um, connected, but she was also, um, a therapist and she was specifically teaching therapists how to go from counselor to coach, right? How to bring, I mean, it was that specific, how to bring your practice online and, um, just coming across that and hearing her message. It just, it was suddenly a knowing of that that's it. That's the thing I'm supposed to be doing. And so that started a whole nother <laughs> journey getting into, you know, the online space and um, yeah, this, this call to the marketplace that I, I never would have, never would have dreamed up for myself. <laughs> well, that's amazing. And, you know, our, our CEO and founder, Michelle, she talks a lot about, and we, I mean, we as a company talk about it so often is that for so long, women, you know, and, and men as well. Um, but you don't talk about politics and you don't talk about religion when it comes to business. You keep the two separate. And in the last couple of years, there has been such a huge shift. And that's one of the reasons one of the main reasons Girl Power Alliance is who we are today, because we wanted to change that narrative. We wanted to change the way that women looked at business and how they conducted themselves. And, you know, whether they have a coaching business or they started a business or they're a new entrepreneur, or they still have a nine to five that they go to, but not to be afraid to have your faith and who you are and your love for Christ and mesh the two. I think a lot of times people get really confused when it has to do with money, right? They get confused in the fact that, oh, well, you know, I don't want to make an exorbitant amount of money because that's not, you know, God wouldn't like that. And at the end of the day, it's so untrue and it has to do with your mindsets around it. You know, those limiting beliefs. I, I read a little on your website talking about those limiting beliefs and how women limit themselves and it's, we have to break through those barriers. And, you know, we are all about that. Like I personally, I I'll share something just a little personal to kind of dig a little bit deeper is I felt the same as you as a child. I was always like, you know what? I feel like there's so many people that come to me for answers. There's so many people that are like, Hey, I have this problem. Can you help me? Or, you know, someone is in complete distress and, you know, they, they find me as a safe space or, you know, whatever that is. And, I was never that little girl that was like, you know, I, I want to be, you know, a pilot or I want to go to space. It was always like, I think I want to help people, but I don't know what that looks like. And, 
you know, counseling is one of them. I, I kind of, kind of, you know, tailored with that a little bit. And now being here at Girl Power Alliance and talking to women very similar to you, it's, you know, we're, we're discipling, you know, no matter what it is that, you know, we're actually doing that pays the bills and, you know, does all of those things. It's really discipling and sharing the message and sharing with other women and your clients that, hey, there is a better way. Hey, there's another way of doing things. So you're not burnout. You're not tired. You're not angry. You're not upset with whatever career it is that you are choosing. So I, I really just, I, I love that you touched on that, that you were yearning for more. And there's so many women that are like that. Now, what is something, because I know you did, you know, counseling and psychology. So with that, what was really the turning point? I know you said, you know, it, it was a couple of years and you felt this yearning. Like, was there something that God revealed to you, you know, personally, whether it was, you know, with your prayer time with him, was it kind of like an aha moment? Um, I know you had met with someone like, when was that exact turning point to where you're like, oh, there's, I need to add more so that I can impact more? Yeah, that was, well, again, it was just, it, it's interesting because it it wasn't a, a moment of, I need more. What happened in the the pivotal moment for me, the realization was, I have to do things differently. You know, I was already going after the more, but I was doing it in striving and thinking that God was in my business and not really. (laughs) Um, It's kind of hard to describe because people think, oh yeah, God's in my business. I pray about my business, (laughs) you know, like, but there's this other level of partnership with him that you can, that you can be in. And I, so I thought he was in it with me and he was right. Like he doesn't leave us, but the, the pivotal moment for me was the realization that I am so burnt out. I am at the end of me. And if something doesn't change, I can't go forward. Like my, my body was done. There was like, I physically was not going to be able to continue. And it was in that moment that God met me and said, let me show you a better way. Mm. Ooh, Holy spirit chills. <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone can feel that, but mm. you're, I think that's so important because even in this time, we know he'll never leave us, but is he really the center? Is he really the focus? And I believe that even every millisecond, sometimes we say, oh, you know, I need God every second. It's almost every millisecond. Every decision, every thought has to be that. And I, I appreciate you being so honest and saying like, yeah, he was in my business, but was he really in my business? Was I really going to him with that when I wasn't, I couldn't continue anymore. And you talk a lot about hustle and grinding and hustling and bustling and, you know, having this toxic, you know, situation in, in your business. Um, you know, why, for your, for your clients or even for yourself, why is it important to put God in front of that instead of striving? Like you were, like you mentioned. Yeah. So one of the things um, that I do teach my clients is we go back to the garden. What was the original intent? And work is meant to be a blessing. It's not a curse, right? And we really dive into that part of what was God's idea for work. And because I think it's, it's been villainized, right? And so we go back to that and we go back to the garden and we look at the two trees, right? The tree of life and then the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
And I think what people miss um, is that the tree of knowledge produces one fruit and it's both good and evil. Right. We think we can separate out, oh, I'm doing something good for God. Right. And that's what I thought. But that's where the striving happens when you're doing it for him instead of with him. And when you're doing it with him, it's coming, the fruit is coming from the tree of life and you are giving life to people. But when you're doing it in the striving, you're, you're just giving. I mean, it's death, right? It's life and death. It's that clear, black and white. And we, you know, we like to, I think we like to live in the gray sometimes, but there really isn't a gray. And so when I, when the Lord showed me and I, and I had that realization of even when I'm doing good things, it's not bringing life because it's coming from this other tree that brings death. Then there was this moment of, oh, I, I cannot keep doing that. Like I absolutely can't. I don't know how to do it different yet, (laughs) but I know I can't keep doing that because God has made us to be life giving and it's got to come from union with him and come from the tree of life and what he's put inside of us and not out of us striving in our own efforts. Mm, So beautiful. And I want to piggyback off that a little bit, only because of what the world is experiencing right now. Mm. There's a lot. I feel that there is a lot of trauma that a lot of women in general have to overcome before they can accept that what they're doing is in alignment with what God has planned for their life. And I'm sure you come across it. And what is, what is one or two things that you could share with women that they could implement right now so that whether they're releasing, you know, their, their, their unbelief or they're releasing their, their thoughts of like, oh, I have to get this done. I have to do this assignment or I have to hit this deadline. Like what is something for women in business, maybe one or two, maybe three things that you can implement that would give them such a massive shift in their perspective in their business so they don't feel that they're hustle and grinding and they're just striving, but instead they're doing life. Yeah, it really starts with that that shift of for and with. Am I doing this for God because I think I have to earn something? Or am I doing it with him because he's gifted me? Right? That's that's the difference in in the the mindset of for is so performance based. Right? And that's where again, that's where I was. I was in the mindset of you know, if I do this for God, then he's going to bless me with this. And switching to the with, I'm doing it with him. Regardless of what I do, he loves me the same. So I'm going to do it with him. And if I mess up, I mess up. He still loves me the same. But at that point, I didn't yet know, and this is where I find a lot of women are, I didn't know not that I didn't know, I didn't believe, right? Because there's knowing and believing. <laughs> I didn't believe he truly loved me that much. And I mm, really so didn't. Good. So good. Yeah, I really didn't even believe that he liked me. Aww. Like it was, you know, I had grown up in church and you hear God loves you all the time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. But when it came down to it, I really didn't believe he liked me. I didn't believe he cared about the details. I didn't believe that, um, you know, that he wanted to spend time with me. I didn't understand that it was a relationship. And so the biggest 
um, aha that I can give you, if I can say it that way, um, for me came in just spending time with him and not reading your Bible, not praying, not listening to worship, worship music, not saying any of that's bad. Okay. I want to be clear about that, but just in the getting to know him, I, I realized I was doing all those other things to check off a list and it was out of obligation. I'm going to read my Bible today so I can go check. I did that. And it, it wasn't out of a love relationship. And so he invited me into just spending time with him. Like no expectations, no, you know, I, I didn't go into it with, hey, let me tell you what's going on. And this is what I need you to do for me. And, you know, we do that a lot. Um but just sitting there, what I would do, and I still do it now, is I'll sit there and just close my eyes and imagine Jesus is sitting in front of me and just allowing him to love me, just allowing him to be himself with me. Not, again, just not going into it with expectation of you know, well, I want to talk about this or this is going on in my business and we need to work on this and da, 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 right? Just being still and quiet with him and saying, what do you want to do today? Right. And allowing him to love me in whatever way that looked like for that day. It's, it's something different every day, but initially it was just that sitting with him, just being quiet and still and allowing him to be himself with me. Sitting over here getting emotional because yeah. it's it's so profound to think of the relationship that we each can have with him. And it all looks different. Uh each of us worship differently. Each of us pray differently. Each of us spend time with him differently. And the way that you just described that, I think is, I don't want to put perfect on there, but in, in my mind, it's perfect because it's so, there's so many people that are unsure of how to hear from him, talk to him, spend time with him. and you know, you said it, it's, it, it's not a matter of coming to him like, okay, all right, God, here we go. This is what I have to accomplish today in my business. And how are you going to show up for me? It, it, it's not about that because those, those things are, are, are worldly and that's going to happen. And, and God knows that. And, and we know that that's going to happen regardless. Those tasks are going to get done regardless. That phone call is going to happen regardless. He already knows, but to take that, that moment in center and go to him with it all and say, like, almost like you're just getting this hug and you're just spending that, that moment. Um, thank you so much for that because I think so many women need to to understand that, that it's in those moments, you just need to feel that no matter the chaos that is happening or what you have to handle when that moment is done. And I hear a lot that women don't believe that they're loved by God. They don't believe it. And I heard you say that you didn't believe it. You, it's like you superficially knew it but you, but you truly in your heart of hearts and your soul didn't believe it. And, you know, our faith definitely has, it's, it's, it's hard times with that because it's hard to believe things that are unseen that you can't feel that you can't physically see or hear or, you know, touch or taste, you know, those five senses. And so, um, it's such a beautiful thing to, you know, to really find in that space. And I appreciate you really breaking it down so simply. I feel like I could just keep talking and be like, 
yeah, this is what I do. And, you know, I feel a little convicted because I, I started a new routine. And as soon as you said like, oh, it's a check mark. And I'm like, thanks, God. <laughs> thanks. I shouldn't be doing that. It, it shouldn't be a thing that I check off, mm -hmm. you know, and it shouldn't be that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that, you know, you get to do. Mm -hmm. And I really, wow, that was okay. I think we're done guys. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we get so <laughs> caught in the shoulds. Yeah. Right. Like that was my, my world for 30 plus years, the shoulds and the people pleasing and what are their expectations of me? And I had put that onto God, right? And thought that he wanted certain things from me. And, and just in that taking a few minutes to just be with him, he started breaking down all those preconceived ideas I had and I realized I don't know him right and I've had this wrong view of him for so many years and I was filtering so much through religion mm. and what I thought God was like not actually knowing what he was like and and so, yeah, I would just encourage anyone listening. There's no condemnation in doing the in in doing the routines, right? There's no there's no condemnation for obviously for reading your Bible or praying or the things that you're doing. And but there's more. Mm. There's so much more if you will allow him to show you. And that's what I found in those moments with him. And I say moments, you know, it, it changes from day to day. Again, I've, I've learned to not put a time limit on it. I don't say, okay, I'm going to sit here for the next 30 minutes. You know, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I just, again, it's just in that simplicity of, Lord, what do you want to do today? You know, and sometimes it's five minutes and sometimes I may be there for two hours, yeah. but I have found so much freedom in that and releasing expectation of a clock, you know, and, and saying things like, I don't have time for that. I don't have, you know, I know there are going to be people who hear this and go, I don't have time to sit there for two hours. You don't have time to not. Yeah. <laughs> mm. you just don't I mean the the transformation that you will see I don't have words for um not just my life but think about like you don't exist in a bubble so anything that's that's transforming in you that's gonna spill out to the people around you and it has I can honestly say investing time with the Lord has an exponential ROI. <laughs> you want to put it in those yeah. terms. I mean, it has changed my life. It has changed the way I parent. It has changed my marriage. It has changed all, I would, yeah, I'm going to say all relationships that I'm in. Because when you allow him, mm. to do the healing in you that needs to happen, right? There are things I had no idea. <laughs> I had right. no idea the, the things that I was carrying. And hello, I'm a therapist. Like, yeah. this is what I do. I know how to get into all that stuff. And, and there were things that he uncovered that I didn't know were there. And it doesn't have to be scary mm -hmm. because again, when you start with just that one thing of being with him, allowing him to love you, he's not going to uncover things that you can't deal with, right? That you can't handle with him. And so it, it's, it's been this process of 
just initially learning to receive, learning how to receive that love for myself. Because the thing is, you will only trust God to the degree that you actually believe he loves you. Mm. And I realized I didn't trust him. That's why I didn't want to go into those quiet times with him and be vulnerable with him because I didn't think it was safe. Mm. And that's what I find with the majority of my clients is they don't really believe they can trust him or they can be that vulnerable with him. And so just we start with that process right there, just learning to receive his love. And he knows what you need and he knows what you can handle. And he, you know, he, he will present himself. It's such a beautiful thing. Each person I've done this with, it's never been the same experience twice. Like everybody gets a different Jesus, right? It's a different, he's so multifaceted and he will present himself to you in the way that you specifically need it. And it's such a beautiful thing. So again, I know I've gone on and on, but I just want to just encourage everybody listening to just, even if it's five seconds, Mm. just start somewhere with just, Lord, I want to let you love me. And then just see, see what he does. Oh, it, it, so powerful. It's you, I think we all have this idea of how God sees us. Mm. I think we have this idea of like, oh, well, you know, I got to do this and I have to do this. And, you know, he sees me like this. and the reality is in that healing, as you were speaking about it, there's, they don't teach this in school, right? And you as, you know, a therapist and that, you know, talks to people, I, I feel like a lot of times people will trust other people before God, Mm -hmm. when God knows everything. Yeah. Even the things you don't tell your therapist, even the things that you may not want to admit to yourself. And it's so true. I think going to him with all of those things, good and bad and ugly and ashamed, because he's never going to share that secret with anyone. And you can heal from that. And I mean... This, but it's it's so amazing. I I'm I'm literally blown away. I I feel like every time any of us come on here and talk to you know all different types of women from all over the world that are doing so many amazing things in business in the marketplace. You know, each and every one brings something different and better, and the caliber is just so beautiful and it's so beautiful to see that what girl power alliance mission and vision is is all over the world even with you all the way over there in georgia i'm over here on the west coast and that we can have that same belief and alignment with jesus even though we're completely two different people because in the end you know, we're not going to take that spreadsheet with us, right? (laughs) In the end, we're not going to take, you know, that clock in, Mm -hmm. clock out tab with the check. And we know that when it's time for us to, you know, meet him, none of those things are going to matter. And I think the most important thing that you said is you don't have the time not to and it brings me to a verse in the bible i don't know the exact verse so please nobody if you want to quote it below you can i'm not the best at that (laughs) god knows my heart (laughs) is i for sure and for so many people that i love and that i don't even know i don't want him to say that you never knew me Mm. i i don't i don't want that for anybody child, 
young, old, I, I don't want them. So I think it's so important to spend that time. And I just want to say thank you, Susan, for your humbleness, your grace, your, I mean, I think we can all agree her voice. I feel like I'm like in this trance. She's just so, <laughs> but that's, you know, and that's what it is being so close, you know, and, and being yeah. so clear and having that clarity and really having God lead. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Thank you for sharing. And um, yeah, this was, this was incredible. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll ask, and I'll, I'll have you end us, is um, what's, out of all the things that you learned, what is, um, what are you most excited for now? What are you most excited for that maybe you're working on or that you're seeing? What, what are you excited for, you know, going into the next year, the end of this year? What are you excited for? Hmm. I am just excited to see what's next. <laughs> the Lord is just constantly expanding, you know, the the reach of his daughters. And um I believe 2023 is is going to be a big year of partnerships and collaborations. Um, and I know GPA is all about, there's no competition in the kingdom and I love it. I love the mission that y'all have, but I, I really feel like going into the next few years that we're going to see an explosion of that, mm. of just his. Mm. His daughters coming together and displaying the Father's heart. In such a powerful way that we are, mm, our voices are amplified when we work as the body. And that is what I am super excited for. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Oh, you're amazing thank you so much thank you for everybody listening and uh, you're such a blessing and we can't wait to see what God does through you for you and together so thank you so much and we'll see you next time guys yeah, thanks for having me